What's up, Cooksy Mob? How we doing? I hinted about this video last week, and, or last video. This is the video in relation to Daniel Blair stepping away from Supercross. The, the official PR said he's stepping away. I'm going to say what actually happened. He was pushed out by Ricky Carmichael, Lee Diffie, and NBC. These guys are jackasses that don't know the sport. And I'll explain to you why they did what they did and how it's going to affect the sport. Um, it, it's, it's pretty stupid, guys. So for those of you that don't like a little bit of the dirt, the little uh, TMZ or CMZ, as some of you guys have called it, just turn it off now. But we both know you won't because we all kind of like that stuff. So, all right, guys. Uh, I want to thank EBC Brakes. You guys know they've been with me forever. Uh, brake pads, rotors, brake lines. They kick ass. They're awesome. Check them out. Uh, and when you need that for your mountain bike, car, motorcycle, get EBC. Uh, Complete Racing Solutions, you guys know Coach Rob, smartest guy in the industry when it comes to uh, physical fitness. He runs biological, statistical programs that actually get you to your personal best, no matter what. Epic Garage Designs, if you want to make your garage or anything in your house look kick-ass, if you need slat wall, ships anywhere in the country, it's inexpensive. Uh, it'll clean your garage up like nothing you've ever done before. Um, check out EpicGarageDesigns.com. And then Strapped. You guys know Strapped. They got the goggles. They got the political ones. They're awesome goggles. They will use your 100% frames or fly frames and tear-offs and lenses. They all are interchangeable. Um, but yeah, check out Stra RideStrapped.com. And I'm going to start going through the comments and giving away goggles for good comments. Not comments that just kiss my ass. I love those, and I love the ones where you yell Cooksy Mob, but it will be actual good content where you think logically or, or, or make me go, yeah, you know what? You're probably right. Those are the guys that are going to win these uh, the goggles. So uh, go for it, and uh, all right, guys, let's get into this thing. You need people like me so you can point your fucking fingers and say, that's the bad guy. So what happened with Daniel Blair stepping away? This, this blows my mind because those of us who watch the sport, love the sport, breathe the sport, which is most of the Cooksey mob, we understand. We want a guy in there that knows the sport, that feels the passion, that cares like we care. And you can take a look at Ricky Carmichael, the greatest motocross racer of all time. Uh, Supercross, he's the GOAT. I mean, there's no doubt about that. But just because his resume, what he accomplished in the sport, doesn't mean he's good at talking about it. I would actually argue the complete opposite. He says some of the dumbest stuff. I think it's all uphill for him at this point. That's actually incorrect. No, he, my dad uphill? Said. No, it's, it's all downhill from here. But everybody wants to be up. Nobody wants to be down. So it's all uphill from here. But it's easier as you go downhill. So your dad didn't know the fuck he was talking about. Hey, shut the dude probably didn't go to school. Um, he's a bit of a redneck. I don't think he represents the sport in a positive manner. If you want to get real about it. And just because he won a lot of races doesn't mean he's good at everything he does in life. Um, doesn't even mean he's a nice guy. In fact, this actually happens to a lot of star athletes who focus and they have this, this incredible desire and they're willing to chop down anyone in their way to get what they want. Look at Lance Armstrong. I don't think anyone's going to argue that he's a nice guy. He is an, kind of an a-hole. Uh, he, he's done some horrible, horrible things to anyone who challenges him or threatens him. You hear those same stories about Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, off the court, probably wasn't a very good guy. I mean, he did some really questionable things. And it's like that same personality that gets them to win on the field also kind of makes him a shitty person off the field. I mean, look at Barry Bonds. Uh, by the way, Barry Bonds and Ricky Carmichael have a lot in common. They both played in eras or raced in eras where testing was non-existent, um, and they both disappeared right when testing came out. So, yeah. So a lot of Ricky's success, I'm not saying he wouldn't have been successful no matter what he did, but that's his personality. He'll do whatever it takes within the rules, with outside the rules. He'll step on whoever he needs to step on, just like Lance Armstrong. And that's the same mentality he's brought into broadcasting. I mean, let's look at his history. First off, when he moved up, he screwed over one of the nicest, coolest people in the sport. I don't know him super well, but every interaction and everyone I've talked to that knows, Ezra Lusk, you know, he, he's a good person. He's a good guy. He genuinely cares about his family and friends. 
He thought Ricky was a friend. As soon as Ricky moved up to the 250s, man, he severed that, Ricky severed that relationship and shit all over Yogi. Uh, it was a bad news. It, it, really, it really hurt Ezra's feelings. And, you know, that, that was the beginning of, a, you know, and, and I, if it was just that one situation, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be like, okay, well, that's, I get it. They're both going to the 250s. Ezra's a definite threat to him. They're in a competition. I would, I would say, okay, but then you look at what he did to, to Jeff Emig. This is disgusting. And I don't understand Jeff Emig and why he can't, why he just keeps defending Ricky. It's like almost like his ego won't let him admit that he's been duped and he's been shit on by someone who he thought was a friend. But he doesn't understand what a real friend is because Emig's a little delusional himself. Uh, so what he did is he, he goes in, he pushes Jeff out of the booth. You can say what you want there. You know, Ricky, trying. his story is he didn't even want the job. They just knocked on his door. That is so far from the truth. There's no chance they did that. There's no chance they just randomly decided Jeff's out, Ricky's in, we're going to do whatever it takes to make this happen. If you don't think that Ricky stabbed him in the back to get that job, you're crazy. Jeff seems to think he didn't. Uh, that, he, to this day, says that. He, in fact, he even created a Ricky Carmichael grip for him in ODI right after this to prove that they were still friends, which, uh, like I said, it's delusional. They did the podcast, uh, what they call it, Real Talk 441. They, Jeff thought it was a great podcast. Jeff enjoyed doing it. Jeff thought that Ricky was his friend. Jeff thought they were going to continue the podcast. I heard that, that Ricky had dumped him, and I'm like, wow, really? So I called Jeff, and I said, Jeff, do you want to do something with me? He doesn't want to do anything with me. He's, he thinks he's above me, which... Maybe he is when it comes to clout and all that. But listen, I look at human beings as a human being. But Jeff told me, no, we're good. Me and Ricky are still doing it. It's all good. And I'm like, whoa, he doesn't know. He doesn't know that Ricky already dumped him. So, like, what kind of a friend does that? If I'm with Johnny Hopper and Coach and I get an opportunity to do something else and I have to ditch the podcast with these guys, the first call is going to go to both those guys explaining the situation. That's what good people do. That's what normal people do. That's not what Ricky did. Ricky just let Jeff find out. And Jeff still defends him, and Jeff still doesn't care. Jeff still, like, I don't know if his ego or what, why he won't admit Carmichael's not a good friend. Carmichael doesn't know how to be nice to people. He doesn't. He knows how to take, 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 and be number one. And that's, and it, like I said, it's not uncommon in people who are very high at sporting events. But in regular life, that's a sad existence. It's a sad, sad existence. And it ends with, with him and a lot of people that don't really care about him. Because um, that's if you treat people that way, when that glory's gone, it's gone. I mean, that's it. Um, it, it I would not want that, that existence on Ricky. And Ricky Carmichael is just, man... Listen, and I also know a lot of personal stuff that I'm not going to, I'm not even going to air the personal stuff that I know about him. And I'm not going to tell him how or why I know what I know. He would shit his pants if he knew what I know about him. Um, it, it's just funny. People talk. And when you're a dick and you do horrible things, they get out. They get out. Eventually they get out. And I'll just say, he's not someone I would ever want to be friends with. I was skeptical of him and Daniel right off the bat, but, uh, you know, Daniel goes into things, Daniel's open-minded. Daniel went into this relationship hoping that, you know, he could work with Ricky and make each other better and become a dream team and do all that. Ricky saw him as a threat instantly, and Ricky does this thing where he talks down to people. Ricky 100% feels like he's better than everybody. In fact, there was, a, there was a Blair's breakdown that I saw, and I was like, oh, my God, if this guy's willing to do this on camera, what is he saying behind Daniel's back? Like, it's disgusting. He goes in there and he talks about the VIPs. And literally, Daniel's doing a shoot, a video like this, and Ricky just blows him out. And as always, Ricky goes to uh, whenever he's, you know, and this is what these type of guys do. They always go back to, well, I won championships and you were in LCQs. Who, who, who cares? What does that mean? Ricky, you haven't raced since 2007 or 8? Yes, you were awesome. You're the greatest of all time. That's awesome. But in the real world, you got to treat people decent. And the way he treated Daniel on camera lets me know how much he probably back-channeled to get him out of there because he's threatened by him. And he's learned in his life, if anyone threatens you, step on them, squash them, whatever you got to do. Uh, and then he, you know, he, he, he looks at Lee Diffie. 
and he sees somebody who's done something who is on his level where he, you know, he comments the Indy 500, he's got some clout. Ricky looks at him and sees somebody who, who, he, re who he, re he respects. He looks at Daniel and he sees someone he doesn't respect because he can't, because he looks down at all of us. He thinks all of us fans are a bunch of pieces of crap. Look at the way he talks about VIPs versus fans. Ricky's, and dare I say, he's such a hillbilly, but yet he's got this upper mentality where he looks down on everybody. What's that all about? Like, really, I, I feel bad for him. I really do. But he sucks as an announcer. He says some of the dumbest stuff. Um, he's too afraid to make a pick. I don't want him in the booth. This is why the sport won't grow. Because we get a guy who could be the Joe Rogan of our sport in Daniel Blair. He's awesome at what he does. He can talk about the sport because he's done the sport. He also is a broadcaster on the highest level. Has he done the Indy 500? No, but he can do all the same jobs as Lee Diffie. He can have someone in his headpiece, and he can do all that. But he can also throw it to the analyst. But he can also be the analyst. Why on earth would you ever not want that guy working with you unless you're threatened by him? And it's a bad, backstabbing job to be the announcer for Supercross. I mean, Denny Stevenson got asked out by Jeff Emig. I mean, it's dirty. If you talk to some of these guys that have done this job and been in that position, they said there's no harder seat to keep, and there's n it's 10 times dirtier than what you'll get in motocross. So maybe that's why it fits Ricky so good. His personality is just probably a pretty garbage human being, and, and it fits in perfectly.